This is the Real Positive Girl podcast, and I am your host, Sabrina. I'm here chatting with you about your emotions, your mental health struggles, how to take those first few steps towards being more vulnerable, being more honest, and being more self-aware. And we do that two times a week, so welcome if you are new here to the podcast, and welcome back if you are not new. Today, we are going to be chatting about what it means to struggle with self-abandonment, neglecting ourselves. Um, But first, let me just ask you a quick question. Have we become friends online yet? I know. If you listen every week, you're probably like, yes, we have, or no, I keep forgetting. Totally fine. I'm here to remind you again. So, you know, let's make it more real if we have become friends online by you sending me a DM and saying hi so we can chit chat. And if not, just You know, look in the show notes below for you to find how you can reach me on Instagram and TikTok. I am at uh, Sabrina Joy Perozo. I was like, what am I at again? (laughs) Sorry. Uh, Sabrina Joy Perozo. And then on Twitter, if you like to, you know, see all the tweets. And again, you might think that Twitter is like a negative place to be. It just depends on who you're following. So if you're following the wrong people, that's probably why it feels really negative. Just so you know, I used to think Twitter sucked too. And then And I was only following it for like football updates just to be real here. But then I realized, oh, I can just unfollow all these people and it's a better place to be. Uh, So on Twitter, I am at Real Sabrina Joy. So come say hi, friends. I look forward to that. Again, all of how to spell all that is down in the show notes below. I have one more question for you before we move on to today's topic. And is that is, and is that is, that is, have you signed up for the weekly newsletter? Or a better question might be, have you suggested a topic I should talk about? Or... And maybe an even better question is, have you checked out the planner journal hybrid that is available for sale on amazon.com? You know, if not to any, if if the answer is no to any of these questions or some of these questions, again, I encourage you to take a peek down in the show notes below and you will find links to all of these things. I have recently revamped the weekly newsletter that does come out every single Wednesday to be more streamlined and easy, but still more like even more robust with things that I want to share. So check that out as well. And um, also, the last thing is I am sharing that anyone that would like to support my goal of sharing mental health and mindset content online and full time to become a month or do- monthly donor over on Patreon or to you know, contribute to me in another monetary way, which would be buying the journal or submitting a random donation through Cash App or whatever. All of that information is down there on the show notes for you. That is my goal to be able to honor you the most and be able to create more content, do all the things. Um, But if you would like to not do any of those things, you can still just listen and share the show. I appreciate it. It helps me so much or share all of these things and maybe someone else will want to do that too. So, well, check all that out. I look forward to meeting you online and becoming best friends. Now, let's go ahead and actually chat about what it means to struggle with self-abandonment, neglecting ourselves. So I was on Twitter and saw a tweet from my new favorite psychologist, Dr. Nicole LaPera. I hope I'm saying that last name correctly. I've never actually heard her like speak with words or say her name out loud yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, But she was speaking about self-abandonment. Now I say that my new favorite psychologist because I just discovered her and I don't mean in a way where it's like, yeah, I discovered her and made her what she is. Absolutely not. I (laughs) was on Twitter And finding, it's like looking up, you know, things that have to do with what I enjoy researching and spending time with, which is always mental health, mindset, emotional health, those kind of things. And I came across a tweet of hers, and it's not the one we're going to talk about today, but I came across like some of the things that she was sharing and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, when you just meet someone, whether it's in real life or online, it just all, everything lines up. It's like the nail is just hit on the head, you are just like instantly drawn. They feel like they were meant to just appear in your life. And I've had that happen with friends. I've had that happen with my husband. I've had that happen with so many opportunities in my life. I'm sure you have too. And this is what happened with this psychologist that I don't even know, that I don't even know on Twitter. And so much so that I was reading a couple of her tweets. I immediately went to her profile, followed her, and saw that she wrote written a book, went to Amazon, looked at the book, immediately ordered it, got it the next day, and then 
and then it's just there from there. It's just it's just there. Like I'm gonna start reading the book soon, but I already had like a book in front of hers, and so I'm like, oh, should I not read that book and read hers first? Maybe I'll read both at once. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm gonna read her book in the next like 30 days because I am so stoked because I realized, and this isn't even in my notes. I just wanted to share it with you because I'm so darn excited, and I don't think I've really like voiced it. Uh, vocally with anyone. I was going to on Instagram one day, but then I got distracted with something else that I had to do. But she calls herself, I think it's like her social media handle all over for everywhere, the holistic psychologist. But then I went online and I actually Googled the term holistic psychology and it's a thing. It's a thing, guys. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is what I do. And yeah, I'm not a psychologist. I did go to school for that. My intention was to go to school and, you know, get my master's and my doctorate and actually be a, you know, world renowned child psychologist. That did not happen because of so many life things that uh, I allowed to get in the way and blah, blah, blahs and probably wasn't the path I was meant to be on. That's what I'm accepting in life. But the way that she gives information, research, words or tweets, uh, even the little like snippets that I've read in the book. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And the book that I'm going to read by her is called How to Do the Work, Recognize Your Patterns. Yes, I'm reading the book that's actually sitting at my desk right now. If you're watching the video one, which you probably won't watch for a couple weeks now because there's other ones in front of it that are going to, you know, turn out on the, on the YouTubes, but I'm reading it. So how to do the work, recognize your patterns, heal from your past and create yourself. Now, if you are not a new podcast listener, you can listen to that and be like, well, Sabrina, you're right. It all fits. I don't know. I'm just, I'm so excited. I just, it just all fits in everything that she talks about. And uh, it's what I'm doing. I, and I've, and I've struggled to have a term of like, what am I sharing online? I share a mindset. I show mental health. Mental health is way too broad. I kind of like, you know, slicked it down to emotional health emotional wellness, well-being, whatever, put our words these days. And then I realized, wow, I am sharing like holistic mindset tips, holistic mental health tips, holistic. So I basically added a word, but I feel like I added a clarifying, identifying word that made sense because I'm not just here just like spitting science. I do read the science and then try to just break it down into easier ways to understand, but in a holistic way, really like considering your environment and the things that are like feeding in from everywhere, the choices and decisions that you're making, where you're putting yourself and how, and like how you're talking to yourself and everything that encompasses your world and how that is like contributing to the things that you're struggling with. It's amazing. I'm very excited. I just had to get that out there. So if you have not heard of her, I would encourage you to go follow her on Twitter if you want to do that, the Twitter things, <laughs> or just follow her on any other social media like Instagram, TikTok, whatever. I don't know if she has a TikTok. For sure, I haven't checked that out. I haven't gotten that far because I am like a Twitter girl now. I'm a Twitter girly, guys. <laughs> I am. It's fun because I can just like share my thoughts in real time and comment on other people's things, which is how I got all like wrapped up in her commenting and just loving her through the screen and it's amazing and so if you ever want just like some quick hard hits from me it's gonna be on Twitter because Instagram and TikTok do not really allow for that to like be a thing that is very viable anyway let's move on I love her I'll be talking about her more as time comes but I just had to unload that to you guys yes to you okay so I was on Twitter and I saw a tweet from my new favorite psychologist Dr. Nicole LaPera, and she was speaking on self-abandonment. This is why we're all here to talk about self-abandonment. And this was her quote. This was the tweet that really just set it all off for me. And if you go look up this tweet, you'll see that I even like responded, oh my gosh, this is the topic for the podcast that's coming out next. Here it is. Putting everyone else's needs before your own isn't selfless. It's self-abandonment. Society glorifies this, and it's a massive reason why so many of us are unwell. That was the tweet. And right after I read this, I knew I had to do a podcast episode on this topic. Self-abandonment. 
My gosh, that is quite the word in the phrase. I, oh, even thinking about it excites me. It's not like an exciting thing to be experiencing. Absolutely not. I'm just excited for something else to like, oh my goodness. To, you know when like you discover things that just kind of define what the heck you have been going through. You know what I mean? And it's like the people that will, res- you'll, like if you are in this camp with me, you'll resonate is what I'm about to say. You know when you go to the doctor and they're like, yeah, you're like, I'm struggling with all this crap, blah, blah, blah. And they like immediately spit out like a diagnosis or a word or like a description. I'm like, yeah, you were dealing with this. And then you like, maybe we'll you'll confirm it with a couple other doctors and some of your own Google online research because Google is our best friend. And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have this. I have this. And listen to what I said. I didn't say we just went to Google and we diagnosed ourselves. I, we went to professionals as well, guys. Okay, Let's just keep that in mind. And it just feels so good to like know like what it is that we're struggling with. It feels less like a burden and more like, okay, now we have something to base all our like internet Google research on. It's not like we're just out here thinking that we're diagnosing ourselves with some sort of life-ending issue. No, it has been given to us on like a platter, like a little like, here you go. This is what it is. Great. And again, it can change over time, especially if research develops and, you know, other symptoms come up and blah, blah, blah. So I wouldn't say like latch onto it forever, but at least it's a place to start. That's what I love. That's what I love. Or you've just been dealing with something for so long and all of these things just like line up and then maybe a lot of like professionals can't identify it. And all of a sudden someone does and you're like, oh my gosh, Thank you. You just feel good. You just feel good. You feel like finally someone sees me. Is able to put it. I it's like pop a little like, you know, label on there in a positive way. It's like the only time that I feel like labels are a good thing unless you're like talking about kitchens and pantries and homes. But in an emotional way, things going on inside of us, it's so fan freaking fantastic. And I actually felt that way when I was diagnosed with ADHD back in the fall. Because it just meant like, oh my gosh, there is a reason why I'm struggling with this, that, and the other. Even when I was diagnosed with like borderline personality disorder back when I was in college, it was just very like, oh, there's a reason why I'm dealing with this crap. It just feels good, right? And so self-abandonment is really like, oh, that is what's happening. And maybe you kind of already had an idea of like, you know, you had... You know, issues and struggles with abandonment and attachment issues, but you're like, oh, self-abandonment. Yes, this makes sense. So when I started to do research on self-abandonment, it sounded a lot like people pleasing to me, just to be honest. It really did. And I was like, oh, we are very familiar here. We are very familiar. But what I discovered was that people pleasing is a part of self-abandonment, but self-abandonment is the umbrella that holds many behaviors and patterns we can fall into. So as opposed to people-pleasing and abandonment being like sisters, they're actually like self-abandonment is like the parent to people-pleasing coming like under that kind of family tree. You get what I'm throwing at you? So I found that very interesting as well because I was like, oh, huh. I don't think I've ever like deeply thought about like what would be above people pleasing. And that sparked my interest as well. I was like, oh my gosh, that's cool. I'm going to have to do more research on that. But I didn't, guys. Nope. Because you know what would happen if you have been here for more than two episodes. You will immediately know that a like, I t- I, it, like, I will, it's a whole different journey. That is the biggest like research focused tangent I could have gone off on and I would not be right here recording the podcast. It would have happened like two or three hours later. I couldn't, but I did put a pin in that. We're going to come back to that later down the road. It's great. It's exciting for me. If you didn't know, if you're new here, research topics often excite me. That's a good thing for someone that you listen to talking about mental health and mindset, just so you know. So it is the umbrella over. Now, you know, putting everyone else's needs before mine is something I am very familiar with, right? As a recovering people pleaser. This is like the bulk of like what you do to gain the recognition, the love, the attention and appreciation you believed 
you believed you needed to not deal with those feelings of loneliness and abandonment, right? If you are a people pleaser, you will know. If you know, you know. People pleasing was the way to quell those thoughts and pains, which meant you didn't have to deal with any of it. You know, quell it, cover it, tell it to shh, tell it to quiet down. You're not needed here. You need to, you need to squash it, right? It was a way to like, squash those thoughts and feelings. So you didn't have to deal with any of it. But it never made it fully go away, right? We thought it did, though. We thought it did. And so we just continued to do it, right? And people told us it would. Some, someone did. Not just ourselves. We continued to do it. And then, you know, we mask the need for other people's attention and acceptance, you know, as selflessness when it's not, you know? How do we mask it? We mask it with people pleasing. Because we're like, yeah, we need the attention and acceptance of, of, of other people. We're going to put everyone before us and cater to their needs and take care of them. And people see that from afar, from their own perspective of like, oh my gosh, hey, hey, that person is super selfless. Let's be, let's just like honor her. When in reality, you're dying inside and you're just like, oh my gosh, all I need is for everyone to promise that forever they will be my best friend and that they will accept me and I will be able to ride the coattails of them forever because I don't want to be alone and struggle because I already did that and I don't want to do it again in my life, right? You know, we are leaving behind, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're getting really excited here, (laughs) but it's not. You know, when we mask the need for people's attention and acceptance as selflessness, it's not. And like Dr. LaPera mentioned in her tweet, it's actually the act of abandoning ourselves when we are engaging in people-pleasing mindsets and behaviors. We are leaving behind who we are, what we would like to do for ourselves and in our lives, what we would like to work on, what's really most important to us that we decided to just like, you know, walk away in some random closet. And instead, focus on the needs of others because it's too scary to deal with our own trauma. It's too scary. It's scary. Now, I'm not making fun of anyone because, again, I myself, recovering people pleaser, dude, I've been there, okay? And it is scary to deal with your own trauma. It really sucks. We got to do it. It's necessary. Healing journeys are heavy, like really heavy, like heavier than the highest goal that I have for a barbell bench, like a barbell bench, a barbell back squat, guys. So heavy. And I get it. Again, I get it. But you know what's heavier than the trauma and the issues and the struggles that you're going through? Why did I say struggles? I'm not that cool, guys. The struggles. But you know what's heavier? The amount of trauma you continue to pile up and not deal with, it's that continual like mountain. It's almost like the mountain of clothes that ends up on that like armchair, treadmill, whatever piece of furniture in your home, in your bedroom that you don't use. Okay, I'm not saying you don't use your treadmill, but you know, that's part of the reason why the treadmill for me is in the garage because I can't really pile crap on it. I mean, I could, but I don't. I don't really use it. But you know what I'm saying. Like the pile just continues to grow. It just continues to grow. It just keeps getting heavier. But once we realize this, we need to start chipping away at it, right? It doesn't matter. Like however you start, you just need to start. That's what it is. Cheesy as it sounds, it's true. Cheesy phrases are often true, okay? Just understand that that's truth in life. But we usually don't. You know, we usually don't start until we, like, hit rock bottom in whatever version of rock bottom that is for us in that season of life because we can have multiple versions of rock bottom and some are definitely worse than others. It just depends. And, you know, I'm sure you're nodding to yourself in agreement as I am. That you're like, yeah, you know, yeah, I hit rock bottom and that's when I start dealing with this and then hit rock rock bottom again and I start dealing with that. Yep, I know. I know. We put off hard things with the hope that it will be easier to deal with it later, only for those things to get harder. They just get more 
difficult. And that's not fun. No one really enjoys that. But we continue to do it to ourselves. It's a, it's a quandary. Dr. LaPera also mentioned in the tweet that society glorifies this fake selflessness, which I couldn't agree more with. Like they actually do. I was just like, wow, yes, girl, go off. It's true. It sees someone doing the most for others, kind of the imagery that I was sharing with you earlier. It sees someone doing the most for others, others, labels it as something profound and wonderful, then tells other people's they other people's, then tells other people they should do and be the same as that person. Because from their perspective of viewpoint, without actually asking any questions or doing any research, they're like, oh my goodness, that is freaking fantastic. Let's tell more people to be like this. And without even realizing it, yeah, a lot of, t- a lot of it is like naive thoughts and sharing. Without even realizing self-abandonment spirals out of control for so many people. And as Dr. LaPera ended her tweet, she said, it's a massive reason why so many of us are unwell. Unwell. And there's that similar to that like matchbox 20 song. Unwell. We are unwell in that we are throwing away everything that points to who we are, what we are truly about, and the needs, dreams, and directions we had for ourselves. All gone. Bye-byes. All because the idea of putting everyone else before you sounds so much more giving and better than actually taking care of yourself first and being concerned with what you should do and how to become your best self. We end up struggling with breaking free from a behavior and mindset that turned us into empty people born out of the fear that everyone has of being selfish. I feel like being selfish, being a narcissist, being mean, stealing, being dishonest. Like these are big like characteristics, at least here in the United States, that people are just like, let's avoid that at all costs, at all costs, at all costs. Even the cost of you actually taking care of yourself and putting yourself first and making sure that you are in tip-top shape before you help other people at all costs. So now that I have provided you with an emotional rant on why self-abandonment sucks, let's chat about how it can be defined so you like actually understand what that phrase means. And, and, you know, then I will end this with how you can identify it in your own life and help others see it manifest in theirs. And then later down the line, in future episodes, we will talk about it more if we need to. And I will feel like I have just fulfilled something that sparked in me so quickly. I'm loving it. I hope you're enjoying it as we are on this ride. So self ab- self abandonment if you want to like look it up and understand exactly what it is in a nutshell self abandonment happens when you neglect your own emotional physical and spiritual needs for the sake of helping others with theirs so instead of being like yeah let's take care of this and make sure i'm in tip top shape nope let's just like leave that there uh-huh and refocus on the person next to me okay how can we help develop your emotional physical and spiritual needs And as I mentioned, it feels like people-pleasing, right? I'm sure you're getting that vibe. You're like, oh, this is very people-pleasing. But it's actually more than that. As I mentioned, it is a huge step above. When you self-abandon, you neglect your own needs, you ignore your own thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and you allow yourself to be used however you can to avoid any type of discomfort, pain, or rejection right? It's a coping mechanism to disconnect from, you know, your own feelings, emotions, desires, with the objective being to avoid rejection and conflict. 
you just don't want to deal with any of it. It's not, it's not on your calendar. You're not getting a reminder. It's not happening. It's not happening, right? So it feels like people pleasing, but it's actually this overarching craziness over on top of it. It's more than that. You don't want anything to do with you if you don't think you're worth it. And I just, I, <laughs> ooh, I hope you're listening closely because this is going to be really important. And I've already decided to turn this little snippet that I wrote into a reel or like a video online because I think it's so crucial. So I rarely am like, here, listen up, like get close. Like, of course, you don't want to get close. You're listening. But it's important. So it's important to note that being this way isn't a conscious choice. Like self-abandonment, people pleasing, whatever, any other things you want to like throw out there. It's not a conscious choice. I know that I remind y'all all the time that we are the only ones in control of like our emotions and what we do and we decide to do, which is still true in a fact. It's not something I just made up. It's a fact of life. But we don't make all choices consciously. And that's the thing that you need to know. And I thought it was important to point out and actually regret not pointing it out sooner. But here we are. This is the opportunity. This is when it arose. And a lot of times we still choose to do something or engage in a behavior or mindset because it was the way that we learned to survive or make it through past experiences, past relationships, or other pressures in life. It was a learned behavior. Why did I say behavior like that? It's a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior because we did it and it helped us get to the next point in our life. And we're like, oh, okay, this is the way we need to do things. Whether it's right or wrong, it didn't matter. It's like when you're in crisis and you're like, oh, I really need to get to the other side of this crisis. And you try multiple things and then something immediately hits and you're like, okay, this is the way. You know, it's like the Mandalorian. This is the way, okay? And so you just get like, it's this unconscious choice now. It's ingrained in you. You continue to use it. It continues to work. It becomes an unhealthy habit, which I talked about in the last couple episodes. So it's important to know that. And this is, but, 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 so we're still making those choices. They're just unconscious choices, right? Because they're so ingrained in us. We're still in charge of those choices. We still have to take responsibility for those choices, but they were learned behaviors and mindsets from past experiences and traumas and things that we latched onto and now continue to use. And this is also the reason I am often harping on developing self-awareness because once you become aware of how you're living life, you can make the necessary changes and shifts to find better ways to cope and finally face your traumas, your pain, your difficult emotions. Then the healing can begin. So yes, you're still making those choices. Yes, you might not realize that you are. And yes, you probably learned them from past experiences or from other people or from wherever. So we have to be aware that that's what we're doing and that's not helping us. It's not being beneficial. It's not the best way to do it. And we got to change it. we got to shift it. we got to make it better, right? Okay, so let's go into and finish up this episode, wonderful episode, on some ways that self-abandonment can show up in our lives. And I have 10 to share with you. Now, I kind of debated like actually doing my whole like, you know, disclosure kind of thing. I don't even think that's what it's called. But you know what I'm talking about if you're, if you're not new here. At the top of the show, because the show isn't really like necessarily giving advice. It's really just talking about what something is and how it can manifest in our life. But let's just throw it in for the sake of it's always there before a list. Uh, so the list that I'm about to share and everything else is based on my own knowledge and research and the research, uh, in my own knowledge and research and the, in my experiences and the experiences of others that I am allowed to share. And if you feel like this, none of this lines up with you or the ways I'm about to share that can, that demonstrate how self-abandonment can show up in our lives, that's totally fine. 
you have that right to go and double check and make sure that the information that you are ingesting is actually beneficial and applicable to you. If you feel like it's not, I encourage you to seek out a therapist or a counselor and have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity to, to figure out what would actually align in you for you to, you know, point out different ways that self-abandonment may be showing up in your life. If you don't want to do that, I encourage you to go over to our best friend, say it with me, Google, and talk about like, you know, type in keywords like self-abandonment. Just type that one keyword in. See everything that comes up. Research articles, blogs, videos, Pinterest, whatever. Everything that comes up. Also, I have nothing against Pinterest. I'm just saying that's usually in the mix. And then, you know, like dig a little deeper. Okay, like how does self-abandonment manifest itself? You know, how do you know if you are self-abandoning? All those kind of keywords. So check that out. If you feel like what I'm sharing here is just not aligning with you, totally fine. Like, absolutely. I'm not even being, like, sarcastic. I never am when I'm sharing that because I honestly think that we should be doing a little bit more research in the things that we are listening to and ingesting and not just believing everything that everyone says, whether it's people in real life or on the interwebs. Just take that in. Okay, 10. 10 ways. We're just going to zip right through them. We're not going to do any super deep dives only because a lot of these topics I've already spoken about often. But if you did want me to do a deep dive into any of these, please feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or TikTok or an email to realpositivegirlpodcast at gmail.com or any other way that you can find to contact me. It'd be great. The first one is people pleasing. We don't really need to go over this. We've already talked about it, how self-abandonment and people pleasing feel the same. But actually, self-abandonment is the umbrella over people pleasing, and that is a way that it can manifest in your life. Number two, feeling empty and numb. So this would be ignoring and or denying your own emotions. And so it goes to this extreme point where you are just feeling empty and numb inside and like nothing matters because you have neglected what's going on in your mind and your heart for so long and focus on other people's stuff that you don't know what's happening in there. It's like a ghost town. It's empty. You know, you would hear a pin drop in there and you feel just so empty and like, does anything matter? You kind of get into dangerous thoughts of like, do you matter? You do. I promise. You do. I can tell you that without even knowing you, you do. I promise. I promise a hundred million times, times 10, times a hundred. So feeling empty and numb, something to look out for. Number three, neglecting self-care, neglecting self-care. So ignoring anything that will promote any sort of well-being in yourself. So whether that's like taking a break or doing like the very like kitschy stuff of like, um, you know, reading a book or taking a bath or working out or a walk or whatever you want to do. Or even other self-care things where, you, again, you say no to commitments. You make sure that you're in bed by a certain time. You know, you're spending less time watching TV or you're spending more time watching TV because you actually don't watch that much. You know, you're, you're doing whatever self-care things you need to do, but actually you're neglecting all of those things. You're ignoring anything that would actually make you feel better. You're neglecting it all. You're abandoning any sort of ideal that you would take care of yourself and you're refocusing it all on everyone else. That's what you're doing. Number only if you're dealing with self-abandonment, not just in general, you guys. Calm down. Number four, sacrificing personal goals and dreams. Sacrificing personal goals and dreams. So giving up these things in favor of focusing on what others constantly want. Not just here and there or temporarily. Now, I definitely made the, like, the note of like, you're giving up on your personal goals and dreams in favor of focusing on other people constantly, on the regular. And it's not this just like temporary season of life where you're taking a back step to refocus everything on maybe what your spouse is doing or what your kids are doing or because you need to, you know, make more money. So it's the time to work and not the time to dream. No, I know those things happen in life and that's fine. Perfectly fine. But what I'm saying is that you're sacrificing your personal goals and dreams forever or from that point on forever, right? Because maybe you don't roll into self-abandonment until like way later in life. You can distinguish whatever way later in life means to you. And then you just let it all go. You're like, okay, goodbye. I set, I, I lit the bonfire. I'm going to go. And 
it's just gone. You just say goodbye and walk away. It's crazy. Not crazy in a bad way. It's just crazy how you would just, like, how you could just make that decision, right? Isn't that interesting? I just find it so interesting. So sacrificing personal goals and dreams. Number five, harsh inner critic. Again, we're talking about ways that self-abandonment can show up and manifest in our lives or maybe in the lives of people that we super care about and we want to, like, kind of, like, call it out and be like, hey, have you thought about this? Number five, harsh inner critic. Negative self-talk and self criticism. Again, this will be difficult unless you catch someone or you catch yourself like saying it's not difficult for yourself, but it's difficult to like help someone else see this. Because generally when you're have like negative self-talk and criticism, it's in your mind, you're not saying it out loud. Sometimes we do though, or we write it down to reinforce it. But yeah, we're just like cracking down on yourself, telling yourself you're not good at anything, you're not worth anything, why are you even trying? You're a piece of garbage, all of these terrible things harsh inner critic. Number six, unable to ask for help. Unable to ask for help. So feeling like you don't deserve to ask for help, right? You're just not deserving of it. Or that if you do ask for help, you'll become a burden on others and you don't want that to happen. And you're trying to unburden them by being there for them in everything that you do for them. So being a burden would go against everything that you're doing and you feel like that would be one of the worst things to happen in the entire world. Unable to ask for help. Number seven, inability to set personal boundaries. Inability to set personal boundaries. So you allow others to like overstep the bounds, just like general boundaries that you may have for your life that everyone just has without even realizing that boundaries have been set. So you allow others to overstep without speaking up, or maybe you have set some loose boundaries and then, again, you just allow people to just like step on over that and not speak up for yourself, not say anything, just let it happen, or, and or, unable to say no when needed. When someone's like, I need you to do this, and you really kind of like, there's some sort of like quiet voice deep down inside, and you're like, you don't want to do it, but you don't say no. You're like, yes. You can't say no. You find it difficult, almost impossible to say no. So you have an inability to set personal boundaries. Number eight, self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. So there's generally tons of fear and self-doubt clouding any sort of self-belief or self-worth that may still exist in your mind. So that will lead you to getting in your own way by engaging in like self-destructive behaviors you know, could be drugs, could be alcohol, could be other like really unsafe things for you to get involved in, could be like spending all your money, which is not financially wise, you're not budgeting for bills and everything that you need. Self-sabotage, self-sabotage, saboteur. You're sabotaging yourself so that you don't actually amount to anything that you could and that you only see yourself as helping other people do it. Of course, you can't do it, but you can help other people do it, you know? Ugh. Number nine. And I say, ugh, because I've, like, been there, and I think it's just, like, ugh, it's the worst. Number nine, chronic stress and burnout. Chronic stress and burnout. The overwhelm that comes from not caring for ourselves can lead to feeling exhausted. Put so much work and time, work, 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 time, 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 effort, 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 thought, thought, thought. Work, 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 time, 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 effort, 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 thought, thought, thought. That we just like, (sighs) it's kind of like something vaporizing in the air. That's how I would, that's the imagery I'm giving you. Just do so much and then (laughs) you're gone. It's like the snap. And all the like Marvel Avenger movies. It's like it's just gone. You're done. You're done here. Chronic stress and burnout. It just becomes too much. Because you're doing too much. You're not taking care of yourself. And then you can't help anyone. Which is the part we forget. It's like just focus on yourself a little bit. And you would have a little bit more juice to come back and help someone. You know? You don't charge your phone. Battery dies not going to be helpful to you or anyone. You don't charge yourself. Your battery dies. 
and then you're still not helpful to anyone. Number 10, and the last one on this list, unhealthy relationships. Again, we're talking about ways that self-abandonment can show up and manifest in our lives. Unhealthy relationships. So codependency definitely will pop up. Trouble with intimacy and sharing things, being honest, sharing like things we've gone through, truths, experiences, right? And codependency, if you're not aware, is that just really that one person wholly dependent on the other person in the relationship. And it's often a combination of someone that is like people pleasery and like low self-esteem, low self-worth, and like a narcissist. But sometimes it can be both where they both are like clinging to each other for dear life and it's a hot, hot mess. I've been there before. So codependency, trouble with intimacy, enabling unhealthy habits in others. So let's say that, you know, if you are so on the train for self-abandonment, neglecting yourself in every kind of way, then you don't have any personal boundaries or abilities to like you're feeling really numb and empty. That if you're with a partner that's just like doing all these unhealthy things, you're going to just enable that behavior because it's like, who are you to step up and tell them or really like share your opinion or try to reinforce some rules and boundaries in your relationship? You're not going to do that. It's going to continue to be an unhealthy relationship because you're going to enable their unhealthy habits because you don't feel like you have the right to do or say anything. Or attracting partners that knowingly take advantage. So if people take enough time to observe how you live your life as they you know, a person that's keen on self-abandonment and neglecting everything inside of you for someone else and someone catches on to that, they're going to they're gonna hitchhike on that train as long as they can. They're going to take advantage. They are going to ha- like be excited for however long it lasts for someone to just take care of everything and focus only on them and on themselves until they become useless and then they move on to the next person and you're left empty. Even more than you were. Even more than you were. Like, not even cobwebs, guys. Ooh, thank you. So, unhealthy relationships. Just a couple examples of unhealthy relationships. But that's all 10. That's all 10 of the ways that self-abandonment can show up and manifest in our lives and in others. And that is a good brief overview of self-abandonment, what it means to struggle with that, and how it's all about neglecting ourselves and why we need to be aware of it so that we can conquer it and move on from it. But that's it. That's all I have to share with you today. So thank you so much for listening to the Real Positive Girl podcast. Again, please share the show. I appreciate it 110%. I do. Like, you don't even understand. So please, like, thank you for listening and downloading, and I really encourage you to share it. And if you have time, um, I think... I don't think it's like if you want to rate the show on Spotify or Apple. I know on Spotify you just like I don't think you actually like a review review. I don't think you just check stars. But on Apple you can still leave like a review review and in like words and a comment. That'd be great too. If you have time for that, that'd be awesome. Um, don't forget to check on everything else in the show notes below. So signing up for things, joining communities, saying hi, whatever you want to do. That'd be awesome too. But until next time. Have a good one, and I will see y'all next time. Come say hi to me online. Bye.